back to the independent investor channel ran here on a highly on video for the week uh of uh of january uh 12th here 13th actually it's friday we're releasing this video a little bit um a little bit late this week um and that's totally fine um really has nothing to do with my desire to continue to put this product out every week um, it's just that I haven't been able to find the time and the schedule. I've been uh, engaged in other projects and uh, um, uh, very interesting stuff. But uh, as we kick off 2023, um, there's a, a renewed sense of um, enthusiasm uh, around the stock market, uh, understanding perhaps maybe that the um, you know the uh, effects of inflation and um, the effects of of rising interest rates. Um, perhaps maybe um, in in some capacity have been baked into the stock market. Um, and perhaps maybe there's a potential for some of uh, the damage, if not the most of the damage to have already been incurred in 2022. Uh, it's an idea that I resonate with uh, and I have shared. Um, I thought when the Dow and the S&P were at its lows um, just after or right during the summer of 2022, I thought that could potentially have been a low. Um, I've watched this transpire before. I watched it transpire during the um, the uh, pandemic lows, where every talking head that knew everything about the stock market got it wrong. Every one of them. Um, nobody ever comes on and admits to being wrong. Um, I just so happened to be one of those guys that called for a V recovery, and I was absolutely 100% correct, and I profited from it. Um, I was buying the market on March 18th of 2020. I just was. Um, I don't believe that there's any special instinct that I have other than paying attention and buying at a point where I feel like the fear is the most rampant. Coming into 2023, I don't believe that that fear is as rampant as it was in the summer of 2022. I do not. Um, will we test those lows? I don't know. Most of the talking heads believe that we will. They believe that it's going to be an earnings-driven recession, and that somehow 2023 is going to be the year in which that recession is realized and is bracketed. No problem. Um, I typically contend that people will probably be better off in their lives if they could just consume that content for entertainment purposes only. Um, and that's the information that you want to just leave at that. Okay. Uh, make decisions for yourself that makes sense for yourself. Uh, and not decisions that are being put out there by others in way of influence um, or or in, a, in an attempt to generate hype. I get blamed for being a hype machine on Hyleon, um, when in all actuality, um, I'm a stock owner in this company, I, and I could care less whether or not you are or not. Um, I could care less. Um, I'm engaged in this project insofar as um, it feels good to be a Hyleon stock owner. It feels good. Um, what Hylion is looking to do uh, in their mission statement in revolutionizing and electrifying the powertrains of our Class 8 fleet is a noble one. Um, it is um, a, a novel perspective in the way that they're going about doing it, um, but it is not uh, scientifically advanced. The, the, the concept um, of of bringing the power with you via generator um, is exactly what boats have done for years and years and years um, that have, you know, systems, uh, 12s and 24s and 110s on the boats, um, and they bring the appropriate size generator they need for the consumers of those loads. This trucking idea is, is the same. Now, it is novel in the perspective that they are um, introducing to this to the class eight space. And I, I'm not sure if this is a an idea that has been thrown around, discussed, um, and has been decided to not deploy, or if Hylion just so happened to be <laughs> that company within the last decade um, to really make the most advance uh, in this uh, in this idea that we don't have to go the Bev route and 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 charge the unit as we do. Um, a battery operated toy, <laughs> you know, um, this idea somehow that we have to be reliant upon a grid that is non-existent now, um, instead breaking away from that idea and bringing uh, the actual generator with you, I think is a fantastic idea. Um, some may not consider it novel 
in that regard. Uh, and I would be open to those uh, those those scrutinies of the company. In that, um, I've heard some scrutiny of over Hylion. Hylion is that they're a they're a bolt on company. I think that's an escape from thinking. Uh, and I think it's a failed acknowledgement to all of the progress that they have made on many, many fronts. And I think it's a very, very shallow criticism of a company um, when when neither of those critics, um, nor really, in all fairness, myself, uh, can really speak to the complexities that uh, exist in bringing um, a new idea to this Class 8 space that has been well-defined uh, over the last uh, multiple decades in a way that has been deemed efficient uh, and reliable. Um, you, you know, so you wonder why fleets are potentially reluctant to change. Uh, if that's fair, um, it's just, it's it's to be expected because before they're going to opt for a new technology, they have to understand that that technology can meet the rigor to the demands uh, that they're putting over uh, that technology. Um, in other words, the bottom line is all that matters. The bottom line is all that matters, okay? But on paper, if the bottom line TCO benefit is there and the unit that they're putting to drive that TCO benefit cannot perform efficiently and reliably, um, then it will fail to, to, to penetrate this market. It is that defined and it is that important to what it is that we do in moving our goods across this country uh, and also across the bro uh, globe in the grander transportation nexus. But I was able to rewatch the ACT interview. I thought that was a real highlight from 2022. I thought it was summed up fantastic. I thought the Wall Street engineer uh, here recently has probably provided one of the best pieces of highly on content, hands down, um, that I have just uh, had the pleasure of reviewing. Um, his name is Ronnie, the channel's Wall Street engineer. Um, he's in and out of his project a lot, um, not by nature of, of anything other than the fact that he is indisposed in other lines of professional work. But it is a real treat when Ronnie comes back to the channel. If you're unfamiliar with the channel, big shout out to Ronnie and the work that he's done on Hylion. It's something that I appreciate big time. Um, the guy's got a bigger brain than I do, so he can extrapolate data in a way that most human beings can't. Um, he's got that AI, and hopefully he gets a kick out of this and takes it from me as a huge compliment and a real service to not trying to say, hey, look, Hylion is better than Tesla. I don't think that was really his intent. I, I think he gave proper credence to you know, Elon Musk and the, and the technological advancements, but I think all of these companies, they deserve some level of recognition and what they're trying to do, um, I'm quick to say that certain companies just are really missing the mark on on certain categories. And I contend uh, that Tesla is not immune from that scrutiny. I think Tesla get a, gets a pass a lot of the time. Um, I think in some capacities, it seems like Nikola gets a pass, although uh, as of late, it seems like there has been some real light that's been shed on the Nikola story. Uh, and some real criticisms on whether or not it's going to unfold the way that it was expected to unfold uh, in, in way of the expected mark they were supposed to make on the Class 8 space. Uh, I think some of these companies are going to uh, find out quickly uh, that they're not going to be able to compete in the long haul Class 8 space. I, I think short haul is going to have its place, and I think it's going to actually be the sweet spot uh, for the BEV application. I really do. I think it's going to be the sweet spot and the proving ground for hydrogen fuel cell as well. As these strategic uh, opportunities for fueling stations are identified along those routes where it makes sense, uh, then we can start to introduce the idea of, of hydrogen fuel cell being more of a viable product in moving our goods. So I take a step back and we look at all the technologies across the board and I think Ronnie did a fantastic job of breaking down his strategic points of emphasis in in way of the great separation between Ilion uh, and Tesla specifically.
Um, and so if you didn't catch that content, please catch it. Uh, he does a wonderful, wonderful job. I always want to try to bring people in to the community that are in, interested in the story and try to share those opportunities of of uh, of content. I know, uh, you know, Dexter just put a, a nice video here. It was nice to hear from Dexter uh, with Drive Mix Game, um, explaining kind of where he is and what he's doing. And uh, uh, he, he's he's one of those cool guys. Yeah, man, he's, he's like one of those most interesting guys out there. Um, you know, one day he'll be in Dom rep the next day. He'll be over here in Texas. The next day he'll be, uh, right now in Virginia where, where I guess his home is. And that was kind of cool to, for him to share those insights because people really buy into those stories way too much. They, they really get enthralled by what people are telling them. And then they presume all these things when, you know, a, a channel creator like Dexter takes a break for very good reason. He explained it very quickly on a two minute video. But I think each and every one of you guys with regard to your highly on position, if indeed you do have one, um, it has to mean something to you. It cannot mean a lot to me. And you and and you just expect to somehow borrow my enthusiasm for 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 why it is that I derive the conviction that I do on this holding, okay? And some of the things that really really help me in in understanding is is understanding that this is by far um, uh, a a position that is long in nature. And one that supplements a very diverse portfolio across the board. Um, I have 20 accounts, um, each of which have a different strategy. Um, Hylion is my largest holding per dollar amount and per share uh, currently uh, as a single stock. But I do have some really big positions, bigger positions in the indexes for sure, which kind of help justify looking at this perspective from a holistic perspective and understanding that Hylion just is what it is. It fits that niche, okay? So when we want to discuss the Hylion holding and what it could potentially mean and what it has meant holding the stock thus far, which has been really, really difficult, um, you know, I, I'm entering into um, or have been in a phase of complete and utter disappointment in the outreach from Highland Holdings. It has been absolutely atrocious. It has been absolutely incredible how this company with a 30% movement in the stock for no reason, okay? There's been no reason for the movement of the stock. If it's trading action, if it's, you know, the expiry of options, or if it's uh, the relief of short selling, or if it's the relief of 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 tax loss, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but this 30% run that we've had here year to date means nothing to me. I mean, absolutely nothing. I look at it from a little more critical perspective in that, you know, it, they don't get a pass now because the stock has in, it enjoyed a couple of days of success. Okay. Now, if you go in the, the Yahoo thread with which I, I contend is probably one of the darkest, deepest cesspools on social media, um, you can see the lowliest of lowly of, of human life in there. Um, so if you do want to rub shoulders with some mud people, um, please kick into the Yahoo thread. Uh, you'll be less of a person after you leave uh, for rubbing shoulders with the complete and utter moronic pieces of garbage um, that dwell in the cesspool of the Yahoo thread. Because everything that they say, it's like you have the human intelligence here. They're somewhere down here in the evolutionary chain uh, in between a pigeon and a snake, okay? Um, the, 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 there's no rational thought. There's absolute malicious intent in, uh, behind that. Um, and so that's a place that um, I would I would suggest that uh, you don't spend any time in. There's no, nothing valuable there anymore. It's really too bad. Um, it's been a, a place where, uh, again, these... Um, 
absolute pieces of garbage uh, for human existence go to make themselves feel good because they can yell into this echo chamber. Uh, and the few other cesspool people say they, they all like to hang out together um, and 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 engage in uh, the banter of groupthink, um, even though none of it makes any sense whatsoever from a cognitive perspective. Um, and so it, it runs anybody off who actually wants to have or pick up good information because it's all conjecture, all of it, all of it. It's all based on opinion and conjecture, okay? If you do want to check out a good drop point of information, I invite everybody to the Highly On Discord group. Um, that is a fantastic way of seeking um, interesting information. Um, contrary points of view, yes, are welcome. Um, however, it's uh, a bias to bull because the consensus around this company, even though what has been quantified over the last couple, two, three years as all bad in the stock action, um, still contend that this opportunity has its best days in front of them. And so if you are interested in engaging in that line of, of thinking and the transform the transformation that is happening in the class eight space and many other spaces right now, guys, this isn't just a movement that affects class eight trucking. Um, class eight trucking is the number one contributor to pollution. So it does beg the urgency in trying to address this problem within the class eight space um, but, uh, certainly to kick over to the discord group and, and check that out. There's a few Facebook groups as well that are available to you. Um, I, I'd encourage you to, to join those and, um, and seek out your information as you will, uh, avoid the ones that I caution you. You're not going to get any benefit from, uh, and, and join those opportunities, uh, and the few content creators like myself who are trying to, uh, generate some churn over the company. Um, I will be discussing the word hype uh, over the coming uh, weeks on the channel and understanding that um, hype is only generated from malicious intent. And I do nothing but share transparency on my current position. And some people will say, well, I do videos because I'm down in the company. <laughs> I've been doing this a long, long time. Um, if you if you doubt, my tolerance to the stock market investing, perhaps maybe you're making that criticism based on what it is that you would do or you, how you would react, okay? Nobody knows me. I come on to share what I feel like is the true story going on. And you're not gonna get that from CNBC, you're not. I saw an argument today on CNBC, it was fantastic. One thinks that we're in a bull phase of the stock market, and the other thinks we're absolutely in a contraction phase. And nobody actually knew what it is that um, was actually going to happen with the market. They just get on and they banter back and forth. The truth of the matter is nobody really knows. But what good does that do people who are seeking out good information on uh, companies that we cover, stories that we cover? Um, where potentially the trajectory of a prospective company is going. There are certain things that Hylion needs to get right. And um, this outreach, I, I'm i speechless. Uh, I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know if they have the best kept secret or if they are utterly embarrassed and have absolutely nothing to share. I, I have no idea. If I could just define to you guys the extreme spectrums on what I'm reviewing, um, that that is the wide spectrum that I have. Um, I am a large share owner in the company, and I have no idea what my company is doing because they fail. I mean, absolutely fail to share information um, with the general populace. And I don't know if it's by by nature of their uh, their their decision to do that. I don't know if this was just a blatant decision to just sever all social media and outreach and news releases. And uh, I, I don't know if they've fired the entire department. I don't know if they've sent them all on hiatus for the entire winter. I have no idea. I just do not know. I, I just don't know. And I'm extremely disappointed in um, the lack of, of, of uh, transparency with this company. 
especially with while you have momentum in the stock market, um, starting off 2023 in a year that I consider should be a transformational year with Hylion to come in 13 days into the new um, the new year and have absolutely nothing on the forefront is just unacceptable in my opinion. And that is just my opinion. Um, I feel like I'm right. I wouldn't offer it without it. Um, that is the deepest level of my insights and, and charge and constructive criticism to this company. I cannot believe the quality of information that is coming through Twitter, irrespective of Hylion's lack of transparency from Andreas Rakowskis and Silent Alert. Those two cats are doing a phenomenal job. They deserve a specific shout out from the Independent Investor Channel. Gentlemen, thank you. I really, really appreciate that because without your renewed sense of, of sharing information that you're find, finding on the open source, that evidently the, the Hylion team can't find uh, by using open source information, uh, which is somewhat concerning. I, it's it's embarrassing, but from a stock owner perspective, it's 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 quite concerning that over the last 13 days, this company has either chosen to be silent for either good or bad reasons. I have no idea. I, I could presume that they're being closed lip because they have a huge announcement to make coming up, right? So it, it just it just begs the question: What is going on? Uh, and it um, is incredibly important for us as a, a community to stick together, uh, to continue to churn out that information as it becomes available uh, to the grander community and, and live to fight another day. Who knows? Maybe they're just going to blow open the doors here and announce some absolutely enormous um, uh, order that they've been working on with with who knows who. I have no idea. But the order book has gone very, very dry. Um, reservations should be a piece of cake. Reservations are not binding. Reservations, they should have 10,000 reservations at this point. And you might say, oh, Ryan, you're being unrealistic. Okay, well, they should have 5,000 then. Uh, let me be fair. Um, they could have 25,000. A non-binding uh, order uh, or reservation should be very, very simple to just put somebody's interest down on paper and consider their fleet and pledge to 100 or 250 or 500 reservations for the Hypertruck ERX, that should be an easy slam dunk. Uh, evidently, it's not, or the timing is off, um, and this company is is failing in their ability to, um, to, to garner new reservation interest. Uh, or are they? I, I just don't know. I just don't know. So... Starting off 2023, um, as we move out of the and close the chapter on a dismal 2022, it just did not let up all the way to the end. It was an absolutely horrible year. It was horrible. Uh, we've started off well. Uh, we we really have. We've caught some momentum in the market. And I think that 2023, what I always earmarked as kind of a transformational year, is going to involve the first half of the year being a lot of the same of what we have incurred. Um, I just don't see a whole lot changing for the first of this year. Now, as we step into the latter half of, 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 of this year, uh, I would expect that a few things that could occur in the first part of this year, winter validation completing uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, CARB and NHTSA certification, uh, to get that out of the way would be huge. Uh, and a continued uh, uh, right against the backlog of orders and reservations. Now, if we move out of the first part of this year and we continue along this dry spell of no orders and no reservations, uh, it's going to be um, very, very difficult for this company to remain um, anywhere in a respective category. And if they're not careful, they're going to slip into oblivion. Uh, and what I feel like is already a prove it story, going 13 days uh, on a company that's supposed to be valued at at close to 450 million dollars uh, is um, is unexplainable, and it is uh, unexcusable in my mind. It's unexcusable because I think this company is right at the verge of flirting with oblivion. I do. I think, and if they're not careful and they don't use momentum to try to gain 
a little bit of accelerated attention. Just bring a little bit of attention to the company. Nobody knows about this company. That's the interesting part to me. Um, and, and I think it would help solidify what it is that we're marching toward. And I I, I just don't know if it was a, um, a, a conscious decision. I don't know if it was a frustration with um, uh, sharing social media and the backlash that came from it. I have no idea. Um, but I certainly, from my chair, question the decisions on what's going on. And uh, I, I I sometimes sit back and say, well, they must know what's good for them uh, because whatever decisions that they're making, uh, ultimately, they will need to render itself to success. This company has no excuses. Uh, it's been given all the funding in the world to, to, to see this product through after two and a half years of dragging shareholders through what has been a horrible experience. It's been absolutely horrible. And I hope the board of directors hears this. I hope upper management hears this because I give highly on an A plus in building the board. Uh, Jay Craig just uh, was appointed to the board here. Uh, highly on gets an A plus at building boards to turn back what value. I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what value the board of directors brings to the table under the uh, uh, brings to the table. Uh, in this company's early inception, because what this company needs right now, uh, the board of directors cannot offer. It can't offer strategic direction to a company that's burning through capital as quickly as Hylion is. So I question the motives behind the only news release since the Christmas tree was delivered um, that Jay Craig has, has joined the board. But hey, who am I? I don't run the company. Uh, I'm just a shareholder. Oh, but I tell you what, I'd make a hell of a Nelson Peltz, that's for sure, because sometimes people get comfortable with the circles that they associate themselves with. And I think sometimes individuals have more of an opportunity to see when things are going awry uh, than a circle of people who are all in a circle of comfort, and they all feel like um, perhaps maybe things aren't going so well, but as a consensus group, they have to buy into this idea that everything is okay and nobody wants to say anything. You ever go into a business meeting and you leave and you feel stupider because you have a bunch of people sitting around the table and they're all speaking plain English, like the way I'm explaining plain English to you now, but none of them are actually saying anything useful. Nobody are actually able to say things that actually advance the dialogue along or challenge the strategic direction of the company, or align consensus with strategic directives that actually work. See, this company has no way of quantifying the work that's being put in right now on the strategic directions because there is nothing really that tangible uh, that 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 can be uh, that can be felt. It can't be. Okay, what do we weigh the strategic results against every single quarter? Well, we've burned $135 million of cash per year divided by four, about $27.5 million is burned, 30, 30 million, 30 million plus with the Carno now bringing on board. That is the metric right now, fundamentally, um, that is uh, being scrutinized. We don't have sales. We don't have sales. We have sales enough to pay Thomas Healy's salary for a year. And that's it. That's it. We don't have any opportunity to evaluate the margins because there are none. We have no ability to project sales because there are none. We have no ability to anticipate future sales potential because there are none. We have no way of extrapolating what the industry desire or need is outside these few small companies. Major players aren't coming on board with the highly on opportunity, right? And these are things that I think we need to monitor in the back half of this year to see any of that interest that may introduce itself as a catalyst. I will say this, Hylion up to this point has released a ton of information that you would have had zero way of expecting or anticipating that that information would have been disclosed uh, and, and used it as a decision point to invest or not invest in the company. 
What I mean by that is if you take the entire opportunity that Hylion has to offer and you invest in the company, you can be rest assured that going forward, this company is probably going to incur some level of momentum within the space, uh, some level of catalyst, some level of uh, renewed acceleration in the stock. I don't know if this current acceleration this year is based on news, is based on uh, finalization of certain projects that they've got going on. I have no idea. Uh, but it's fairly frustrating to 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 make those speculations as a uh, as an impatient share owner. Um, you know this this year is going to be telling. Uh, what story will we be telling in Jan in December uh, or January of next year um, as we close out this year? What story will we be telling? Um, there's some schools of thought that we're going to go through uh, this year, uh, having having never moved out of the stock range that we're in right now. Just because we're in a show it's story right now, this company has got to show some results and their inability to just put out a press release is, is dumbfounding to me. Uh, I do more social media in a day than they have done in the last month and a half. And this is a $500 million company. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And, and I tell you what, there will forever be scars uh, from the share owner community um, in this company's inability to successfully navigate this, whether or not they could have forecast it or not, uh, but their inability to, to navigate this and avoid um, what has been just absolutely a, a horrible, horrible experience. Um, and, and what we have right now is, is hope for the future, um, that this solution, which is a phenomenal product, finds its place actually in in the class eight space okay so as we monitor the story going forward i i really want us to continue to be patient uh, i'm going to continue to try to try to find the the bright spots uh, for me right now it's really in the community um, it's in those few places that i mentioned uh drop points of information that you can enjoy seek out um, and and continue to kind of monitor this thing going forward. I will offer a few things for you guys to kind of put this into context. I always try to dig a little bit deeper, try to help you understand that day-to-day -day fluctuations in the stock market mean nothing. They don't mean anything. And I find all too often that people get fixated on the day-to-day -day movement of stock price and stock market action. We've seen over the last couple of days, Hylion can, can go up. It can. Of course it can. It absolutely can. But it's not going to go to $10 overnight. It's not going to go to $15 overnight. Will we have catalysts where the stock jumps? Yes. Will we have catalyst or negative sentiment? Or will we have Hylion up against uh, barriers within the company? Problems? things that they need to address right away, some with large uh, implications, some with small? Yes, we will. Will the stock suffer because of it on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes, it will. We will go through downturns in Hylion. But I think over time, as the story has uh, an ability to percolate uh, and really fortify itself, I think people are truly going to understand what this company uh, can do the product in my mind is done. The final certification and winter validation, summer validation being complete, um, those learnings will roll into the final iteration of the Hypertruck ERX. I'm super excited for the prospects of the future and seeing what this truck can actually do, what it can actually do when the rigor is put to the test. These fleets actually have a chance to run these metrics uh, to the bottom line and actually start to qualify the purchase that they've made, right? Um, I, I think Hylion stands as a leader in this category when compared to the competition out there. I just do not see a comparative competitor to Hylion. Um, and I try to be as impartial as I possibly can, but I just do not see it. Uh, watch Ronnie's video. It, it really does draw a distinction between 
the statistics and the the bare information that we have that's been disclosed by Tesla uh, and the information that we know on Hylion and what what each company is going to actually put to the test at at at, at one point down the line we are going to have the luxury of monitoring each of these companies respective products being placed into the scrutiny and the rigor of the services uh, that they are looking to to provide service to uh, and it's going to be that time where the companies that did their proper due diligence their proper proof of concept that are going to win out over time those companies that can minim minimize those problems that can minimize the potential delays uh, because Hylion doesn't have a reputation and every move that they make right now is is either a positive or a delta against their reputation so their ability to get this thing right out of the blocks with the amount of investment that's been infused into the project i would contend to say that they don't have a choice other than to get this thing right and i believe that they will i think 2023 is going to be a fun year to chronicle 2022 is a tough year uh, to chronicle the story and I closed the chapter on 2022, understanding that I did my part. I have no regrets whatsoever. Um, my intention um, was never about hype, never. Hype is something that you enter into with uh, ill-intended uh, uh, motive. And, and that is something that is far and away, uh, so far away from what I'm trying to do here in just bringing awareness to a company that I think is doing all the right things that is looking at an industry with the greatest need for the solution that they bring to bear. And all they have to do is execute along that time frame. Are they making mistakes? Yes, they are. They're making mistakes right in the public forum for guys like myself to comment on and potentially offer constructive criticism on. Is any of it going to matter at some point if this company is able to integrate their solution into the class eight space if 2023 and the start that we've incurred here up 30 percent is any indication of whether or not there's certain people out there that actually believe that this company can actually do some great things in the industry it will be awesome to actually uh tell the story over 2023 and beyond um, as we look to see more highly on hypertruck erx and hybrid ex units uh, within the fleets helping to reduce our reliance on diesel fuel uh, and uh, and introducing the opportunity for some of those alternative solutions out there that are available to help reduce our reliance on diesel and help with the efficiency within our fleets. Guys, I appreciate the, the patience on this video. Uh, sorry for the delay. We will try to go back to a Sunday upload schedule. I was actually unavailable last Sunday, couldn't do the, the, the offering. Um, so appreciate your continued support. Uh, if you do like the message, continue to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. These always churn up uh, a nice level of discussion on where you think the company is, where you think it's potentially going. Um, I'm going to close the book on where it's been. Um, because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Where we are is where we are currently. And we can evaluate where we think uh, the company is going based on what it is that we know. Uh, and where we can kind of project where the company could go if they have a few of these things and strategic initiatives fall in line the way that they have proposed that they should. And we will be right there at every step monitoring the progress of this company as we get a little bit of footing under the stock price and start to get up to something a little bit more respectable. It'd be a little bit more fun to cover the company actually with us not down in the dumps all the time. Um, me personally, I'm as happy as a clam. I do a lot of things outside of social media. Um, I, I'm a very, very happy man. But when it comes to sharing highly on, I think sometimes I get judged based on this niche piece of work that I do for the greater good. And I think that's unfortunate. But for those that get it, uh, it's going to be redemption, redemption time uh, at some point down the line. And let me tell you, I am going to have a feeding frenzy on my hands with people who I owe a specific shot out. But we will be patient on this. We'll allow Hylion to either fail 
uh, or actually succeed and finds his place in class eight space. The verdict is still out at this point, but happy 2023 to everybody. And we will continue to monitor the story going forward. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.